So, another uh, basic element which we can consider now is what is known as a mutual inductor. Okay. This is related to the inductor. We know that if you have a voltage V across an inductor L and a current I through the inductor L, the flux linkage is given by L times I and the voltage is given by the time derivative of uh, the flux linkage which is L times and the time derivative of the current. Okay. Now, because the magnetic field of an inductor extends outside the inductor, it turns out that you can place another inductor and to distinguish between these two, I will call this L 1, I 1 and V 1 and I will call this L 2, I 2 and V 2. Okay. They can be arranged to be close enough to each other such that when you pass a current I 1 through L 1, it induces a magnetic field in L 2 and causes some flux linkage there as well. Okay. So, the flux linkage in inductor L 1 is related to I 1 as well as I 2 and similarly, the flux linkage in L 2 is related to both I 1 and I 2. Okay. So, this is possible because the magnetic field in an inductor can spread outside the physical extent of the inductor. Okay. So, in such a case what happens is that the flux linkage in L, uh, the first inductor is some L 1 times I 1, which is what we expect knowing what we know about inductors, but it also related to some other constant m times the current in the second inductor. Okay. And similarly, the flux linkage in 2 is related to L 2 I 2, which is what you expect given the second inductor plus the same mutual inductance times the current in the first inductor. Okay. So, the same coefficient appears here and here. We will not discuss why that is the case, but that is a fundamental property that is the proportionality constant between I 2 and uh, psi 1 is the same as between I 1 and psi 2. Okay. And this constant is known as the mutual inductance between L 1 and L 2. Okay. So, because of this again we can get the current voltage relationships which are that V 1 is L 1 d i 1 by d t plus m and d i 2 by d t and V 2 is m d i 1 by d t plus L 2 d i 2 by d t. Okay. So, this is a mutual inductor and the voltage depends on the rate of change of both coils. Okay. This L 1 is called the self inductance of coil number 1 and L 2 is called the self inductance of coil number 2 and this m is called the mutual inductance between these coils. The self inductance of coil 1 is the inductance it would have uh, which gives the relationship between voltage and current if the coil 2 was not even present. Okay. Similarly, for the self inductance of the second coil, this mutual inductance appears only when you bring these two coils together, so that the magnetic field from one inductor influences the other inductor. Okay. And these are the current voltage relationships. Clearly, this is not a two terminal element, there are four terminals, two for each inductor. Okay. 
Now, if you have been careful, you would have noticed some ambiguity. That is, let me take the two coils again. If I take the first coil by itself, I will define V 1 and I 1 according to the passive sign convention and to remove any ambiguity, let me call these terminals A and P. And I could equally well have defined this A and B mark the physical terminals. I could equally well have defined V 1 in the opposite direction and to be consistent with passive sign convention, I have to consider I 1 in this direction. Okay. Now, when I have coil number 2, again I have the same two possibilities. Okay. I have C and D and I can take V 2 this way and I 2 this way or V 2 in this direction and I 2 in that direction. Okay. That is I can consider C to be the positive terminal for defining the voltage or D to be positive terminal for defining the voltage. This makes no difference to the self inductance uh, definition because uh, direction of I 2 is also reversed. Okay. Because if I wrote V 2 is L 2 D I 2 D T, I could also write minus V 2 as L 2 time derivative of minus I 2, which corresponds to the directions chosen in the bottom picture. Okay. If I define this voltage to be something else, it is simply the negative of that voltage and this current is the negative of that current. Okay. But, when you have a mutual inductor, there is a problem. Now, I could uh, define coil 1 to be like this and coil 2 to be like this or like that. That makes a difference for the mutual inductance, because this current is opposite of that current. If I took the flux linkage to be L 1 times I 1 plus M times I 2. Okay. So, there is no ambiguity for the self inductance part for this itself, but for the second part if I take coil 2 uh, I 2 in this direction, I get something and if I take it in the opposite direction, I get the negative quantity. Okay. So, to remove this ambiguity, when you have a mutual inductor, let us say you have V 1 and I 1, you place dots next to the two coils okay, and you have V 2 and I 2. These dots are there, so that the sign ambiguity in the mutual uh, coupling is removed. So, once you are given the dots, what you do is, let us say you choose V 1 and I 1 like this. Let me remove this one. Let us say you choose V 1 this way for the definition of V 1, the terminal with the dot is positive and I 1 flows into the dot then you take V 2 also with the terminal with the dot being positive and I 2 flowing into the dot. Okay. With this V 1 will be given by L 1 d I 1 by d T plus m d I 2 by d T and V 2 will be m the time derivative of I 1 plus L 2 time derivative of I 2. Okay. So, this removes the sign ambiguity that is you take both currents going into the dots and the voltages according to the passive sign convention, then you get a plus sign here. Okay. If for whatever reason you choose to consider I 1 flowing into the dot I 2 flowing into the terminal without the dot. Okay. Then, of course, you have to choose uh, voltages consistent with passive sign convention. 
that means that the positive terminal of V 1 is wherever I 1 is flowing into and the positive terminal of V 2 is wherever I 2 is flowing into. In this particular case, V 1 will be L 1 d i 1 by d t minus m d i 2 by d t and similarly, V 2 will be minus m the time derivative of i 1 plus L 2 time derivative of i 2. Okay. So, as you can see the sign of the induced voltage from the other coil that is the mutually induced voltage is what changes. Okay. The self inductance parts which are given by this, this, this and that do not change. Okay. So, when you specify a mutual inductance you also have to specify the dots, so that there is no ambiguity in the uh, sign of currents and voltages. Okay.